Uh, today we're going to demonstrate a head-to-toe physical assessment. I um, want to let you know, first off, that there's basically two types of physical assessments. The one we're going to show you today is something called a head-to-toe. We're basically going to start at the top of the body and work our way all the way down to the feet, um, assessing each area as we go and asking questions as we go. Uh, this type of assessment is always done uh, at the beginning of every nurse's shift. So normally by 9, 10 o'clock, we are going to want you to have your physical assessment done and documented into the patient's chart. There's reasons for that. Uh, you need to know what's going on with your patient, especially early, the first thing in the shift, so that if something is going on, you will notice a difference from earlier this morning. Okay, if we don't do that and you walk in later, you don't know if that's an acute change or not. Okay, so we're going to show you that, but I also wanted to let you know that there is a, a such thing called a focal assessment that you might have to do also in between, uh, the, uh, I should say, the remainder of the day. Uh, focal assessment really just means centering in to one area. Okay, so say later on in the day you get a... Um, the call light goes off and your patient is complaining of some shortness of breath. Okay, since you did your physical assessment earlier in, this, in the morning, you know that this is a big change or not, okay? With a focal assessment, then you're going to zero in on the area that's causing the problem for the patient. So in the case of shortness of breath, you would actually assess the lungs, the heart, and all of that and ask the appropriate questions. But we'll be working with you on that during the rest of the semester. So don't worry about that. I just want you to be aware there is such a thing as that. Okay? So we're going to do the um, head-to-toe physical assessment. Like I said, it's done first thing in the shift. You're going to get your report from the night nurse, and then you're going to go on in and see your patient. You might first uh, actually do vital signs on the patient and then come back, um, but it needs to be done early and it also needs to be documented because the physicians will take a look at it as well to see if anything acute is going on with their patient. Uh, before you go in the room, you always need to know for sure exactly what's going on with your patient, what brought them into the hospital, what's been going on with them. For, you, for the students, you'll get that in your um, paperwork the night before, but you'll also get some of that in uh, the change of shift report first thing in the morning. Okay, so I think we're about ready to get started. Okay, now I just want to give you a little brief overview as to some of the techniques and what you need to be watching out for. So once again, this is our patient, and we are going to start from the top, work our way down. There, we want to want you to make sure you understand a few things. Question always comes up, do you wear gloves when you do a physical assessment? And gloves really just need to be worn when you have a risk of coming into some patient secretions. So you'll see when we actually do the physical assessment, when we look at the eyes in the mouth area, um, IV site, and um, uh, the perineal area if there's a Foley catheter, an indwelling catheter in there and such. Or if the patient has any type of a wound that maybe has a dressing that's saturated with some dress, uh, drainage. We don't want to have our hands near that, so you want to make sure you wear gloves. Otherwise, don't wear gloves because you do want to always be looking at the patient's skin and feeling it to see for temperature and moisture, okay? So we'll only wear gloves in that case wanted to also let you know that with your stethoscope, for first semester, we're just using the bigger part of the stethoscope. This is called the diaphragm, um, and that's what we'll be listening to. And I need you to remember that any time that you are listening to a part of the body, this diaphragm, this portion of the stethoscope, needs to be touching direct skin. Okay, To be doing above the, the gown area is not good mainly because what you're going to hear is the rubbing from the stethoscope against the gown. And I can almost guarantee you, you'll see in the hospital, nurses that'll just do this and doctors that'll just do this. And that's not good technique. We want you to have good technique. So always make sure that your uh, diaphragm of your stethoscope is on direct skin. Um, the, another concept to remember always is you want to respect patient's dignity. I don't want to be taking her gown down here and exposing her un unnecessarily. So it gets to be a little tricky and you'll have to practice, say when you're listening to lungs, you'll either have to go down the front 
or you can lift up the gown and go under, but we do not want to be exposing our patients, okay? Um, also, when you go in to do a physical assessment, you always want to check on a patient's pain level because if a patient is in real intense pain, uh, you might not get a good assessment done at that point. You might want to go ahead and give some pain medications and then maybe come back in about a half an hour or so and then do your physical assessment at that point. Another um, thing that we need to talk about is a patient's ID band, okay? You might know that, say on Wednesday night when you picked out your patient, that she was in room 222, and you walk into room 222 and start your physical assessment, what might have happened is that patient might have been discharged or that patient might have been moved to a different room. So anytime that you are having to do something with your patients, you need to check their ID band. Okay, so every patient will have an ID band on. And what you need to do is um, do what we call two patient identifiers. So you're going to be looking at the ID band and you're going to ask your patient their first and last name and you're going to have them spell their last name and then their birth date. And you want to make sure that matches up against here. So, and also in the chart that you were looking at so you know that this is the patient that you need to do the physical assessment on and that you're going to be documenting on. Okay? Okay, I um, also want to mention that it's important to protect ourselves as well. So you always want to raise the bed up um, at your level so you are not leaning down and causing a strain on your own back. Okay, and also when we do the physical assessment, like I said, we're going to start from the head and we're going to work our way down to the feet. Okay, so physical assessment really entails two things. It's doing the hands-on. But equally important is asking appropriate questions at each spot. Okay, so I have found that it's easier when I'm examining one area to ask the patient about issues that could be going on in that area. And you'll see that when we do the physical assessment. Okay? All right, so we're about ready to get started. And like I had said first, you always want to know what's going on with your patient. All right, so I'm going to give you a little brief history of what I know of this patient so far. She's a 46-year-old female. She actually hurt her back. She has a history, I believe, of spinal stenosis, and she has intermittent back pain. So she tweaked her back, lifting something at home, and she came into the hospital because she really couldn't walk, and her pain was out of control. So she's been here getting pain, pain uh, medication, and she's doing much better. Physical therapy has seen her, and she's starting to get up and do walking and uh, she's about ready to go home probably in the next one to two days. Yes, hi. hi. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Barbara. Hi, Barbara. I'm one of the uh, student nurses from Golden West College and I'm going to be your um, kind of helping out with your regular nurse today. Okay. Okay? Okay. And it, right now, it's time for me to go ahead and do my morning physical assessment just to make sure everything's going okay. 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 I always need to double check the name band. Can you tell me your first and last name? First name is Deborah. Okay. Last name? Smith. Okay. And can you spell your last name for me? Yes. S-M-I-T-H. Okay. Looks good. And how about a day, uh, birth date for me? 42264. That's great. Okay, thank you. So that way I know that it's the right patient. And um, it, as you noticed, I knocked. We always knock before we come into a patient's room as well. So and you always want to tell your patient what you're doing before you do it. You just don't want to dive in there. Okay, you want to give them a heads up as to what we're going to do. So, well, like I said, we're going to do a physical assessment. Are you in any pain right now? Not that much. Okay, on a scale of 0 to 10, with 10 being the worst pain you've ever had, where about do you think you're falling? Probably about a 2 to 3. Oh, okay. So it's doing okay for you? You don't feel like you need any pain medication at no. all? Okay. Well, um, and how are you feeling otherwise? Doing okay? I just want to get out of here. There's a lot going on, and I just want to get home. Oh, you do? What What do you have going on at home? Well, I just have a couple of kids. Oh, you do? into everything. Oh, goodness. How old are they? Seven and nine. That, yep, that could be a busy stage, huh? Yes. <laughs> do you have any help at home? 
No, I don't. Are my you, husband, I'm, I'm married. You're my, married? My okay. husband's a cop, so he's got crazy hours. Oh, so he's not there to help you out no. too much. Okay. And my mother lives with us, and she's in a wheelchair, so I have to take care of her, too. So that's why I really want to get out of here. Oh, so you have your hands full, then. I do. Between um, taking care of your mother and also your children. Yes, I do. Okay, how, have you thought about how you're going to handle that situation when you get home? Not yet. Do you have any... I'm just going to go with it. Well, you've got to make sure that you take care of yourself as well. Because if you re-injure your back, you're not going to be any help to them. So, do you have any other family in the neighborhood? I've got some family close by. Do you? Mm -hmm. um, siblings? Siblings. Okay. Are they able to come on over and maybe help out a little bit? Yes, they are. Okay. That's good. And um, how about any type of, do you need any information to hire a caregiver that might be able to help out with your mom especially? Probably. That's a good idea. Would you, would you like that? I can yeah. do that. I'll go ahead and um, talk to the social worker okay. and have her get you some information. Okay. okay? That's and you, a good you idea. You probably don't need her for long term, but maybe at least for a good week or two yeah. to protect your back so you don't get any worse. Okay. okay? That sounds good. Also, okay. in talking with a patient... You want to check just to see how she is um, neuro-wise. Just by talking to her, I would say she's alert. She appears oriented to um, at least where she's at, her situation, people around her. Uh, her speech is clear, no drooping in the face at all. Uh, so neurologically and uh, mental status-wise, she's doing just fine. Okay. Say if you were unsure about orientation, then you'd want to go into um, specific questions, and I'll show you that as well. Um, what I just want to do is just check on your orientation. You already told me your name. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the date is today? Yes, July 29th, 2010. Oh, that's great. And do you know where you're at? Yes, I am. I'm in the hospital. Okay, and what brought you into the hospital? Back back pain. Okay, so you can see. Now we can say that she's alert and oriented times four. Okay, so that's always one thing you want to watch when you're interacting with your patients. Um, always when you're doing your physical assessment, you're going to be looking at her skin, her movements and such. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started now then. Okay. okay. Uh, like I said, I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to ask some questions as we go through it. Okay. okay. So if you have any questions of me, please feel free to ask them as well. I will. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Well, I'm going to raise your bed up. I'm getting older and my back is going to give out if I don't keep raising, you know, take care of myself. <laughs> so I'm just going to raise it up some. It's your morning ride. I guess so. Yeah. Okay, and now you can see that that's going to be much easier for me to examine her. I'm also going to drop this arm rail down, just so I'm not leaning over that as well. And I can get a little bit closer to her. Okay, so we're going to start up at the, the head here. Um, very important to make sure that your skin is intact and everything, especially with being in bed for a few days. Um, people are always at risk for... Um, bed sores, and I'm sure that they've yeah. probably have been telling you that and moving you and such. So, yes. um, I'm just going to take a peek here at her, at your head. Can you lift it up for me? Any any tenderness or sores or anything in there? Nope. Great. And can you turn your head toward me and away from me? Okay. Excellent. By doing that, we now uh, we've examined her head because actually the back of the head is a pressure point. Um, people can get bed sores there if they're staying in one position. By having her turn her head, I now know that her range of motion is um, intact, too, in her neck area. Okay. So now let's, um, I'm going to go ahead and take a peek at your eyes. I want to ask questions appropriate to that area, just a couple. Any, uh, do you wear glasses at all? Only when I drive. Only when you drive. Yes. Okay. Any eye diseases or anything like that? Mm -hmm. No pain or drainage or anything that you're noticing? Nope. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take a peek at your eyes. I'm going to put these gloves on, mainly because I'm going to pull down your lower lid and just take a peek at the color. Okay? Kind of tells me 
if you might be a little anemic for such. Okay. Okay. Looking at your lab values, they look like they were fine. Good. Okay. So what we're going to do is you're just going to pull down the lower lid here and just take a peek. And hers are nice and red and pink. So that looks good. Not excessive moisture in there at all. There's no drainage. So very good. Um, what I'm going to do next is just shine a light um, into your pupil. So it's going to be a little bit of a bright light. I'm just going to see if they constrict as such. So what I need you to do, if you could just look up, um, maybe out in the distance there a little bit, and you're going to see a little bit of a bright light in there. Okay. okay. What we're going to do is we're going to shine the light in here twice. The first time I'm going to be looking at the eye that I'm shining it in. The second time I'm going to be looking at this eye to see if it also constricts. For uh, first semester students, we just want you to be able to say that they're reactive, they're sluggish, they respond. Okay, don't worry about the pupil size and all that. You'll get that in, I believe, third semester. So I'm going to shine a little bright light. So just look up there. I'm just going to shine on this side. Okay. I'm going to shine one more time. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing. Good. And one more time. Sometimes with hospital lights, they can be bright. You can also put the hand here, and it might darken it a little bit. Any nasal congestion at all? None. No. Okay, we're going to take a peek at your mouth. Um, How has your appetite been since you've been in the hospital? I know hospital food's not normally yeah. the best. So-so. So-so? Yeah. Okay. Any um, nausea or anything? Any sores in your mouth? Nope. Okay, so at home you're doing fine with eating and yeah. such? That's excellent. Okay. So I'm going to take a peek at her mouth. I'm going to be looking at the color and the moisture and to see if there's any type of lesions in there. Okay? So I'm going to take a peek. Can you just open up for me? And it's nice and pink. It's moist. And can you lift your tongue up? Yeah, okay. Looks good. All right. That looks great. Good job. Okay. Now let me go ahead. I'm going to take these gloves off. Okay. Next, we're going to move on down. And we are going to check something called skin turgor. And that is basically pinching in this uh, sternum area. I'm going to pinch the skin up and see how quickly it goes down. That tells, helps us to identify if somebody might be having a hydration problem. If it stays up, or what we call tense, then they might be dehydrated or lacking some fluids. So you want to use, um, especially on old, older adults, and just make it common practice more in the sternum area. Some people use the um, back of the hand, but as you can tell, I'm already getting old, and it tends <laughs> to stay up, okay? I've lost some of my um, elasticity in that hand. So you want to use a spot that's, that does not happen to. So I'm going to just take a little pinch here. Good. Quick recoil. Good um, turgor there. So have you been able to drink okay? Yes. A lot of liquids? Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to move down and take a listen to your lungs. Okay? Once again, I'm going to ask some basic questions. Have you been having any shortness of breath or coughing? None. Doing okay with that. Mm -hmm. Any type of chest pain at all? No. Okay, that's great. Well, what we're going to do is take a listen um, to your lungs. And when you uh, listen to a patient's lungs, you need to listen anteriorly in the front and posteriorly in the back. Okay? Once again, what you would do is um, have direct skin contact. But for this purpose, I want, to, want you to see kind of where I'm placing the uh, stethoscope. Okay? All right, we're going to move on down to the lungs now. We're going to take a listen to our lungs, working ourselves down the... Um, body here. You always want to ask the questions. Have you been having any type of shortness of breath or coughing at all? No. Okay. Any type of chest pain? No. All right. So that's good. When you take a listen to a patient's lungs, we're going to listen anteriorly, that's the front, and posteriorly, the back area. Um, remember, you're going to have the stethoscope direct contact onto the skin. What you need to do is have the patient take a breath in and a breath out, and then we're going to move our stethoscope. Okay, so maybe I can have our patient sit up here for me if she's able to. So I can kind of show, let me just show you kind of how we're going to do it. Are you okay? Oh. Okay, there we go. Okay. okay. 
All right, so what we're going to do is basically, remember, it's going to be on direct skin. So you're going to have her take a deep breath in and out. In and out. You're going to listen, of course, for these purposes, so I can um, talk. I'm going to keep the, the earpieces out. And what we do is we compare one side to the other side. Okay, you can pick up distinct differences by doing it this method. So you can take a deep breath in and out. And we're going to drop it down. In and out. In another. And you always want to look at your patient, okay? Um, and see, especially if somebody has a lung problem going on, to take a lot of breaths, they might be getting lightheaded. But I'm going to have you go ahead and just set it back on down so since they've seen that area. And what you would do um, is just to follow it, the same concept. So you compare the side, drop it down, compare the side, drop it down, compare the side, drop it down, compare the side. You always want to listen down here at the basis, drop it down, and then compare the side. Okay, that way you can pick up real distinct differences, and we'll teach you uh, the different lung sounds. Um, we'll be practicing with you on that, uh, so don't worry about that. So with the GAM, let me just show you how we'll go ahead and do this. Um, maybe I can talk and do this at the same time. You can start up here. All the gowns have these little snaps that you can just kind of maybe undo a couple of these. And we want to respect our privacy. So we're just going to say, can you take a good deep breath in and out? And in and out. And in, out, in, and out. Okay, now for women, because of breast tissue, it's a little harder to hear. Okay, and it might be a little awkward for you guys to um, move around in that area. It'll just come with time. You might want to then skip down here. I'm just going to lift this gown up a little bit, okay, and listen more down here. Can you take another good deep breath for me? And then you're going to compare. And I'm going to get a little, there we go. Um, if women have larger breasts, you'll have to move the breasts up. So you can take a good listen. I'm going to listen to the bases. Good. Well, it sounds nice and clear in there. Okay. All right, I want to stop right now and for our male students to mention another um, area that we want your, uh, not a rule, but uh, something that we want you to follow. Um, basically to protect yourselves. When you have female patients, and especially if you are examining any area that we call the bathing suit area, any place where a bathing suit will be covering, we want you to have a fellow uh, classmate in there with you, a female, um, or the nurse, just to protect yourself, okay? We don't want a patient to be accusing you of inappropriate behavior. So if there's two of you in the room at the same time, it's much better. But always remember, you just want to protect the privacy of the patient and um, keep her as covered as possible and let her know that you do have to, you might have to move the breasts and uh, just listen and that should be fine, okay? We're going to go ahead and move on down and listen to uh, the patient's heart, all right? We already asked the questions about chest pain. She has none. And what we want you guys to do is listen to what we call the apical pulse. You can feel the radial pulse here on your, on your wrist. The apical pulse, you can actually listen. That's the best place to listen for a um, heartbeat. Um, you use that for certain medications, which you'll be learning, but also if you find an irregular pulse rate, you want to listen, a radial pulse here in the arm, you want to listen to the chest the apical pulse. That's going to give you a much more reliable measure. To do that, we've got to find something called the PMI, or point of maximal impulse. And there are some landmarks that you're going to need for that. Remember that you're going to listen um, with direct contact, but for this purposes, I want to kind of show you how to find the, the PMI. The landmarks are the fifth intercostal space, and the mid-clavicular line. OK? 
Okay, so what you're going to do is, so to find the um, fifth intercostal space, the intercostal is the space in between the ribs. So you're going to go around here, you're going to feel where the rib is, and you're going to count, like one, here's another one, two, I'm going to do it over the gown here, that would be three, four, fifth. So that's my fifth intercostal space. And then the second landmark is the midclavicular line. So you have your clavicle up here, so you're going to go mid, and then this is going to be the spot that you're most likely going to hear the um, pulse rate the best. And once again, especially for women, for men, some men you might even see it pulsating out on the uh, rib cage, but for women very often it's underneath the breast area. And you're going to have to just lift up the um, breast and put your stethoscope there and you're going to count. Okay, so you're going to hear the lub dub. That's one, lub dub, two, lub dub, three. And for an apical pulse rate, you're going to listen for a full minute and see what number that you get. Um, besides just counting, you also want to listen to the heart rhythm. So is the heart rate regular? Lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. Is it irregular? Lub dub, lub dub dub, lub dub dub dub, lub. You know, so you're going to have to tune into both of those things so you can describe the character of that as well. And I think that's it for there. We're going to go ahead and move on down. Our next area is the abdomen here. So once again, think of some basic questions to ask your client uh, about this area. And the easiest way to do that is think what's here. You basically have your stomach, your intestines, and your bladder. All right, so I'm just going to ask you a couple questions. You said you didn't have any nausea no. or vomiting. No. Your appetite so, is so. okay. The food is just the problem. Right? I think so. Okay, how about um, your bowels? Are you having any trouble with constipation or diarrhea? A little bit of constipation, but that's it. You are? Okay. Very often, um, that'll happen because of pain medications that you're taking, as well as being immobile. All right, so uh, do you happen to know if you're on a stool softener at all? I don't know. Okay, I'll double check, and if you're not, we'll go ahead and um, see if we can get one ordered for you. Okay. And um, how about fluids? Are you drinking a lot of fluids? Yeah, enough. <coughs> okay, um, that's good. And how about walking? How much have you been walking? I know physical therapy got you up. Yeah, not a whole lot? Not a lot. All right. Okay. Well, we'll see if we can get you moving, or maybe just up to the chair might help as well. Okay. All right. Once again, anytime you can educate, if you want to, just thought about, but we'll see if we can get you some fruit or something like that as well. How about urination? Are you having any trouble with burning or urinary frequency at all? No. That's doing okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're going to take a look at your belly. All right. And once again, you want to respect pa patient privacy, so I'm only going to uncover what I need, and that's just going to be the belly here. And once again, this would be um, direct skin staring at us, all right? And what you need to do, first off, and I've done this for 20 years, when I look at a belly, I see four squares. We call them quadrants, and we're going to listen and do things in each of those quadrants. So what you do is basically find the belly button, and then you're going to make a line this way, and you're going to make a line this way, and you're going to have four quadrants, all right? We're going to listen in those areas, and then we're also going to palpate or touch those areas as well. But there's some very distinctive steps when you um, assess the abdominal area. And the first one is inspection. So we want to take a look at the belly. All right, and to do that, the best way, I'm going to flatten your head down a little bit. You let me know if it's causing you any pain or discomfort. All right, so the first step is inspection. So you're going to flatten the bed, take a look at the belly, see if it's distended, um, and describe as distended, flat, and such. The second step is going to be to auscultate or listen to it. If you go ahead and palpate, then you're going to stir up bowel sound. So you want to make sure that you go ahead and listen. You're going to listen into each of the four quadrants. And what you're going to end up hearing is a gurgle, gurgle, like your belly, uh, your stomach, when it's hungry. And you're going to listen to the four quadrants. If you don't hear any sounds, 
you have to listen up to five minutes and then if you hear nothing then you can say they're absent at that point. Then the next step is going to be to go ahead and palpate the abdomen. And when you do this, you want to definitely ask the patient if she's having any pain, but you also want to be looking at her face, um, especially if somebody's comatose or real lethargic. Uh, they might not be able to tell you, but they would definitely be able to show you. So we're going to go ahead and palpate. And are you having any pain anywhere? No. So you use two hands, and you're just going to roll across the abdomen. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. You're going to look at her face while you're doing this. And then one last time across the bottom here. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's great. All right. Very good. So we're going to move on down to the legs now. And once again, we want to respect privacy and such. So we're going to keep her covered. And we're going to go ahead and move the... Um, blankets on down. Always looking at color, temperature, warmth, moisture. Um, we are going to do a few things down on the lower extremities. First we're going to check for what we call pedal pulses and uh, you have a pulse that runs um, up here on the top that's the dorsalis pedis pulse and then you have another one I'll show you on this foot kind of right behind the ankle bone that's the posterior tibialis. So what you're going to do, and you need to uh, do it, a uh, feel for the pulse at the same time. So that way you can actually feel it and compare if one is stronger, one's weaker. So to find the dorsalis pedis pulse, um, a landmark might be in between the first two toes. What I find is easy is I just put my hands here until I feel the pulse, and then I kind of zero in and then I measure it so they're equal at this point. You never want to fill pulses with your thumbs because you're going to end up filling the pulse of your thumb instead of the patient's pulse. So that's fine. And then this one is going to be right behind the ankle bone and you're going to palpate both of those. And they're strong and they're equal. While I'm down here, I'm also going to uh, go ahead and check capillary refill and this is a good case. She's got some nail polish here, so you might not be able to see it. This one we can press and see it turns white, and then when you release it, it should uh, pink up, and hers does very well. If it's all nail polish or if they have very mycotic toenails, you can always just push on that and see how quickly that the color comes back. Do you have any numbness or tingling no. down here in your legs? No. Can you wiggle your toes mm -hmm. for me? Perfect. And I'm going to check your strength. So if you could go ahead and push against my hand, excellent. Now can you bring your toes up? Perfect. So once again, you always want to do it at the same time on both extremities so you can compare. Also down here, we're going to check for edema. And the easiest place to do that is along the tibia bone. And you're just going to kind of press for a little bit, then rub your fingers through, okay? Um, if people have a lot of fluid here, it'll do what we call pitting edema. It'll actually leave a little indentation in there. That's the easiest way along the tibia and then feel to see if there's anything there. Sometimes you might see it and that looks great there. What we're going to do too down, while we're down here is to check the range of motion of her legs. If somebody is um, doing fine, say they're up walking, they're doing their own thing, you can say they have good range of motion here, but to check it in bed, um, maybe on a patient who's not moving as well or maybe had a stroke, is to go ahead and so you always want to support and then just ask her, can you bend your knee up for me? Good. Okay. And you're going to do both legs and good range of motion there. And can you wiggle, move your uh, foot around in circles? good range of motion there as well. So that's great. So we've covered everything down here. We still have to check her upper extremities. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, if anybody ever has an IV, we want to go ahead and put gloves back on. <clears throat> and we're going to take a look. You can just relax your arm for me now. 
You always want to make sure that the solution is the correct solution that's running. You'll get that in report. And also when you double check the chart. So you want to make sure it's the right solution. And for first semester, you're going to double check that and um, see if the right uh, rate is on. Say if it was ordered for 60 mLs an hour, it'll say a 60 here. But then you also want to take a peek at where the insertion site is and just take a look at it. Very often it's going to have what we call a transparent dressing, so you can see. And just look for any redness, any drainage, um, any swelling in that area. If you see that, you want to go ahead and let your nurse know. Okay, so your IV is looking fine. Hopefully we can get rid of that for you pretty soon. Huh? I hope so too. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to check your upper extremities, just like we did down below. So I'm going to take a look at the capillary refill, and once again, you can just poke on, see how it turns white, release it, and it should come back within uh, two to three seconds. It's looking good. We're going to check strength. Once again, we're going to check strength at the same time. Um, if you could just squeeze my hands for me as tight as you can. Good. Nice and strong. Can you push against my hands? Whoa, you are strong. <laughs> and can you pull back? Excellent. So good strength. Um, you can always, once again, watch your patient, observe, see if, you know, they're able to do good full range of motion or you can have them do it off on their own. Can you bend your arms up for me and down and off to the side? And down. Good. Any pain when you do that at all? Okay. Excellent. All right. We're almost done. What we need to do is actually look at your backside. Uh, remember when I talked about pressure ulcers developing up in your scalp area? I just want to take a good look and make sure that nothing's developing down um, on the backside of you, on your pressure points. And at that time, I'm also going to take a listen to your lungs once again, but on the back side. Have you turn over to your side. Are you able to do that for me? Okay. Great. You always want to respect privacy and dignity once again. So what I'm going to do actually first is take a listen to her lungs. All right. We're going to use the same technique that we did up in the front, the anterior portion. I'm going to take a listen to your lungs. So if you can take a good deep breath in and out for me, that would be great. You ready? Good. 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 You always want to listen to the basses. And one last one for me. Excellent. Sounds nice and clear. And once again, if you noticed, it was listen to one side, compare, drop down, compare, drop down, compare. All right. Now I'm going to just take a look at your uh, skin just to make sure that everything is intact. And when you do this, it's very important these days to um, watch patient skin. We're really concerned about um, pressure points. We talk about a pressure point up here. Another pressure point would be in the shoulder areas the back of her um, elbow areas here, in her coccyx area. So you'd want to just take a peek in the um, coccyx area to see if anything's going on there. And then we're going to move on down and take a look at her heels as well. Okay, those are the pressure points. Your skin looks really good. Do you have any tenderness anywhere on any? Um... No. Okay, you're doing fine? Yes. All right, why don't you come on over for me? Very good. All right, so everything looks good. Good. All right, so hopefully the doctor will be in here soon and we can see about getting you home. Yeah, let me put your head up so you're a little bit more comfortable, okay? And um, I'll make sure I talk to the social worker about getting you some information on caregiver um, uh, training. Uh, support for you at home. Does that feel okay? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And um, we'll see if maybe we can get you up in your chair and for lunch and get you moving around a little bit more and maybe get you some, are you a fan of fruits or vegetables? That might yes. help your bowels to get going a little bit better too. And I'll All right. Well, I think I'm done. 
So what I'm gonna do, let me pop your uh, bed down. You always wanna make sure that the bed is in the lowest position. These are all safety uh, issues. Every time you leave a patient's room, bed is always in the lowest position. Our side rails are up. Here's your call bell if you need anything. Thank and you. please give me a call, I'll be right out there. And let me move the bedside table over here so you do not have to go reaching for anything. Okay? And I think that we're done. Is there anything else that I can uh, do for you before I leave?